Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Monterey Bay Aquarium's Kelp Forest webcam. My name's Kristen. I'm part of the staff here at the aquarium. It is about 10 o'clock in the morning, which means it's time for our diver, Patrick, to get in the water and take care of the fish. Good morning, Patrick. It looks like you are already in position. Hey, good morning there, Kristen. How's it going outside the window there? Oh, you know what? We are delightful and warm, which I don't think I can say the same for you. The bay temperatures have been getting real chilly. Yeah, it's pretty chilly right now in the water. Last uh, dive I did last week was 53 degrees, which is, you know, pretty chilly for, for our area this time of year. And uh, around the corner in Big Sur and north of Santa Cruz, I know the water is uh, in the upper 40s. So lots of cold water right now, lots of activity out in the bay. And obviously right now, a lot of activity here in the Kelp Forest, all these fish. Very excited for breakfast right now. I did want to say hello to everybody that's tuning in there on the webcam, on the website, who's tuning in over on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter and Periscope, and on Twitch. Thank you so much, everyone, for being there. And also shout out to my family, who's currently watching uh, from their house as well. So thank you so much for being there. But uh, let's get to let's get to feeding here, Kristen. I've, yeah. I've, I've waited long enough. It's brunch time. Yeah, the fish are going to be really in concerned if our introduction prevents them from starting their uh, meal. Uh, I know that we have have a lot of different food items that we feed every morning. What have they packed for you today? Yeah, so what I have in here, we've got a little bit of shrimp. You can see that's going to be for the bigger mouths, for the sharks right here. Here you go, buddy. Right here, right here. Turn around. We're live over here. There you go. Nicely done. Um, She's so got it. Got some shrimp for the smaller mouths over here. Got some chopped up squid, chopped up shrimp, chopped up fish. Uh, some gel cubes, which uh, you can see some right here. This is basically broccoli, Brussels sprouts, kale for the fish there. Uh, lots of extra nutrition. Make sure that everybody gets a well-rounded diet. And uh, we've also, I don't know if I mentioned the krill. Krill is going to be a small shrimp-like animal. And actually, I know that Jamie, uh, my dive buddy at the other end of this hose here, has a bucket of krill. And you're a very excited leopard shark. Yes, you are. Yes, you don't care so much about the krill. You want the big <laughs> Well, I'll let you get um, her a nice uh, piece of squid or shrimp. Um, Jamie up top has already started tossing in the krill, but it's not going to be in view of our webcam no. because it's for fish that are way up at the surface. We have schooling fish, some sardines and anchovies on exhibit again, and they are looking for the tiny krill. So you may catch a little bit of it drifting down, but right now the squid just got stolen from that leopard shark by a perch. That was really dramatic. Yeah, so you can see right now a little bit of a feeding frenzy uh, in the exhibit here, Kristen. Uh, we're used to, or these animals are used to being fed, hand fed twice a day when the aquarium is open uh, and so that has been reduced to about three times a week I believe by hand uh, but we do throw in enough food for everybody so that they are well fed but as you can see you know just like ow, had a little perch there bite my finger just like uh, you know many of us have been cooking at home for the last many few months you get very excited when someone has some free food for delivery there oh yeah I, the effort. I definitely enjoy those free delivery notifications um, now, Patrick, we are getting some questions from folks watching online, and one of them is connected with what we were talking about, the temperature. We ha said it was cold in here. Is that water uh, changing every day? Uh, they want to know if the water in the exhibit changes, and that's how we're getting these cold temperatures. So let's talk more about where our water is coming from. Yeah, it's a very, very good question. And yes, it does change daily with the rhythms of the ocean of what's happening out there off of the back deck. Our aquarium, the Monterey Bay Aquarium, is one of the few aquariums that actually has access to seawater directly off of the back deck. And so we pump in about 1,500 gallons of fresh Monterey Bay seawater per minute here into the aquarium. And most of it comes directly here into the Kelp Force exhibit to start. It's filtered during the day, so you can actually see what's going on. In many parts of the Monterey Bay right now, there is a huge algal bloom that's actually turned the water sort of a Mountain Dew code red red consistency where you can barely see uh, in front of you just a few inches. So right now everything you see here is filtered seawater and then at night we have the ability to put in that raw seawater unfiltered that is filled 
with algae and invertebrate larvae so that the exhibit can have a whole cast of characters that are adrift there in the ocean water. And so when the water temperature changes outside, it changes inside the exhibit and so do so does the activity of the fish. When it's warmer, typically the fish are a little bit more active. When it is colder, typically they're a little bit more sluggish. But as you can see right now, they look very much like California scuba divers getting out of the water heading towards the burrito spot. <laughs> there you go. They know exactly where to get their food. Uh, you know, Patrick, I think it's fun just connecting with uh, some of our, our people who might have fish at home. Uh, I know that when I've taken care of fish um, at home instead of work, I do water changes, you know, every week mm -hmm. or so. Uh, in our case, though, instead of doing a water change every week, it's kind of like we get a complete water change um, every few hours because of that rate you're saying, 1,500 gallons a minute of new water constantly coming in and flowing through the aquarium. Exactly right. And I did just want to point out, if you're watching there on the webcam, we did have a leopard shark or two just go ahead and serve themselves here. <laughs> uh, when we are answering people's questions like we are right now on the webcam, it's sort of like if the pizza delivery guy came inside and decided to just give you a lecture on how the pizza is made, and eventually you just want them to give up the pie. So you may see a few leopard sharks taking umbrage to our narration. Yeah, we um, see our leopard sharks today, but we do have one other species in this exhibit who uh, we don't usually see during the feeding, and that's our swell sharks. Yeah. So this exhibit has two species of sharks, although the swell sharks are really good at doing their job of hiding in crevices. Um, but, you know, with the two species of sharks in here, you know, our guests are always curious. Why don't the sharks bite you? It's not what we see in TV shows and movies. Right, yeah. So what you're seeing right now are just some little puppy dogs here coming up to grab a meal. Uh, for every habitat in the ocean, there is a shark that is uh, meant to be in it. And these particular sharks are adapted to feed in mud flats, on small fishes, on the sand, on uh, mussels and clams and worms and things like that so uh, they don't have very big teeth they don't have very sharp teeth and actually a few weeks ago if you go and watch uh, uh, our webcam there was a moment where one of the leopard sharks actually overshot one of the squid and bit my finger a little bit and what the most dangerous thing about that is that its teeth got caught on my glove a little bit and they've got a leopard shark at the end of your finger that you can't shake off like the pesky piece of tape you can't get rid of so you know, the danger of diving with leopard sharks is more social media embarrassment than really <laughs> anything else. Um, so hand painting the leopard sharks is obviously super fun. Just don't get your fingers in their mouth. That's now, the general general rule of thumb for, for most things. Yeah, we're, we're getting a lot of attention from the leopard sharks up front and center, but I also want to talk about some of the fish on the periphery that our guests might be seeing come in and out of the webcam view. Uh, Patrick, we're seeing a fish I haven't gotten a lot of activity from, the really, really super bright orange Garibaldi. Yeah. Uh, they've been coming up around your feet. There's one kind of behind you in the kelp behind your legs right now. Oh, yeah, I see uh, and <laughs> those there. super bright Garibaldi haven't been too active in our feedings lately. Uh, so let's take a moment to en enjoy them. Yeah, so the Garibaldi is this bright orange fish here at the bottom of the window. I don't know if Curtis, our webcam master, is currently uh, able to pan down all the way down. I don't believe so, but if you do see a bright orange fish, fish folks in here looks like a big goldfish that is the garibaldi it's a california state marine fish so it's our official saltwater fish of california and Kristen, that is one of the fish that i have been bit by in the wild <laughs> they are incredibly ornery fish they're extremely territorial the bright orange coloration is a way to tell other garibaldi where they are and that they should not get in their way and uh, they do a really bizarre behavior, or a lot of fish actually do this, it's very bizarre to hear it, is that they can make noise underwater and they'll actually grunt at you to tell you to get back away from their territory. So one time I was taking a video of a Garibaldi and it was grunting at me and I thought, oh, how cool is that? And then next thing you know, it nipped me right above my mast. And uh, yeah, so that's definitely one of the fish to look out for even more so than the leopard sharks. I've seen leopard sharks in the wild. The shrimp is literally right in front of you, buddy. I don't know how to help you more than that. <laughs> 
Oh, the shrimp is going to get grabbed by a perch again. There you go. Okay. Good work. Yeah, the Garibaldi, um, luckily, you can tell when you're in their territory because they'll actually garden it. They will clear away other things and make lovely gardens of nice algae. That's a great way for the females to attract a mate. So if you are taking care of your lawn or your um, land water-safe landscaping, then you can definitely relate to the Garibaldi. Exactly right. And you know one of the things about the Garibaldi and the garden, and you know, uh, in, uh, in Voltaire's con Indeed, he talks about how happiness is tending to your own garden, and if there's a fish that could prove you wrong, that you do not actually find happiness tending the garden, instead you find orneriness and <laughs> violence, it would be the Garibaldi. Now, Patrick, we um, do have some other fish that were going right in front of your face. Normally that's been reserved for our leopard sharks, but we had, um, I'm going to describe as kind of a blue and white fish, blue on the top, paler on the bottom, nice triangular fins. It looks like our half moons um, have been coming right in front of you today, kind of showing off a bit. Uh, what's something fun you can share with our guests about our half moons since they were actually showing off today? Well, something fun about the half moons is that they are a type of fish called the sea chub, uh, which are also... Uh, the family here of, so there's a half moon right here. Yeah. And then over here, we also have the opal eye with the white spot on the back. And um, they're, uh, they're a type of fish that has become more and more common here in the Monterey Bay. They used to be more indicative of a Southern California environment. So when you used to see half moons, it meant you were probably diving in the Channel Islands. And they've recently made their way into the Monterey Bay in pretty substantial numbers. So you see them. What, what's up, black perch? Um, so these fish right here, you tend to see them diving over at the breakwater in Monterey and up and down Cannery Row in ways that you didn't used to historically. So they're an example of one of those fish that has expanded its range during some warming periods in the ocean and are kind of hanging out now in the Monterey Bay when they used to not really be around. So this kelp force exhibit is really a blending of northern and southern species with many of the more southern species now becoming more classic Monterey species and many of the northern species now kind of moving up the coast and being more common off of Oregon and other areas where the water is a little bit colder more of the time. So it's been an interesting ecological shift there in this kelp forest exhibit as the ocean has changed outside of who's representative of our back deck. Now, speaking of uh, representative oh, off no. the back deck, that, oh man, okay, let's get distracted for a moment. Our Hi. giant sea bass did a swim by. She was awesome. Yeah, so the giant sea bass there, she's, you can see she's got a little bit of maybe sadness in her eyes because she used to get fed during these feedings. Now she has her own individual feeding because we're doing some training with the giant sea bass. You may have seen, we've done, uh, if you check out our YouTube channel, you can see some of the talks we've done with Kelsey, our kelp forest czar, the one who makes sure that everything's looking good in here. And Kelsey was describing the, the target training and the stretcher training that we do with the giant sea bass to keep them healthy. So she now gets her own feeding, but you can kind of see her hanging out on the side, kind of wondering when she's going to get pan fed like before. Absolutely beautiful fish. That is nowhere near a fully grown giant sea bass either. She's still a little baby. Uh, Kristen, is she 14 years old? 12 or 14? Um, yeah, she's getting pretty close to 20. Yeah. But she's, she's getting close to 20. She's still okay. a teenager. I haven't, I haven't updated myself in a long time on her. She's She's been hanging out in the Cal 46 of it for a while. Um, and uh, yeah, they can. these fish can grow to be over five feet long. They can weigh many hundreds of pounds. So still a young one there of the giant sea bass that you just saw swimming by, even though it, it filled the entire frame, I'm sure, for you folks watching at home. Yeah, she was really awesome. Um, I did want to go back, though, because we're talking about things represented in the bay, and we have been seeing out in our bay lots of little juvenile mola mola. Yes. I'm wondering we've been uh, if we're still seeing them out there. Is it still mola season? Absolutely, yeah. You folks may have seen that video from KSPW and a few folks that were over at the Monterey Harbor just about a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago. There you go. Yeah, nice one. The half moon just decided to take the, the squid right from me. The whole um, squid. So we have, yeah, those young ocean sunfish, those mola mola in the Monterey Harbor. And uh, it's very common for them to be around this time of year, but this year has been just absolutely exceptional with molas because we also have the return of the jellies. We have loads of teeny tiny jellies about a foot long in the Monterey Bay. And those sea nettles are the same ones you see on our jelly can 
cam. If you are over on YouTube or on our website looking at the jelly cam, those sea nettles, there are hordes of them in the Monterey Bay at the moment, and that attracts in all of those those young sunfish. They feed on jellies. People have also been seeing leatherback turtles in the Monterey Bay. You may have heard of the big reports of blue whales off of San Francisco. The just the bay, the, this coastal ecosystem is really, really coming alive right now. And so those young sunfish right here off the back deck. Now, unfortunately, Kristen, the uh, sea lions out here enjoy playing frisbee with those young mullahs, ripping off their fins and throwing them around. And unfortunately, it means that a lot of those young mullahs you may have seen are now on the bottom where I've seen them being feasted on by bat stars. So, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, a mullah mole on the bottom. Uh, currently being consumed yeah. by those soup. Well, hey, that's animals. a that's a great way to uh, you know keep the Monterey Bay food chain going, importing it through young molas. Every animal in the ocean, you know, is a part of that ecosystem. So we certainly know uh, that's a part of it. Um, you know, uh, one thing I was thinking though, with that feeding, I've been seeing lots of birds diving off the deck, taking advantage of the same food you're talking about. Uh, we're probably even seeing them on the bay webcam. Uh, yeah. So Patrick, maybe you want to share with our guests how the birds don't end up diving into this exhibit and eating all our fish like they've been doing right off the decks. Right, it's a great question. So above this exhibit here, we do have some some fishing line that is extending over the top to act as a visual deterrent for the diving birds. I might want to come in like cormorants, pelicans, but Kristen, it doesn't mean that we don't have a few geniuses of uh, some gulls that have figured out they can hop in and try to grab an anchovy and also night herons. Uh, if you folks out there open up another cab and type in night heron. Those are really, really magnificent birds that do come to the exhibit uh, late at night to see if they can maybe nab a fish on the surface. And uh, just the other night, I was walking along the beach and I saw many night herons in shore going after some schooling fish that are coming in close to the beach. So we do have some preventative measures for the birds, but some of them get smart and kind of hang out and bide their time. Yeah, luckily with those preventative measures and keeping the predators well fed, we've got animals who can reach lovely long lifespans here. Uh, we have some rockfish in this kelp forest exhibit that I know who've been here with us since before the aquarium opened 36 years ago. And rockfish as a group include some incredibly long lived species. So they may continue to be with us when your grandkids come visit. Exactly, and especially here in the exhibit where there aren't any predators and there's constant food, many of these animals might live in extra long amount of time. So yeah, certainly there are some anemones and some sea urchins, some abalone that have been in this exhibit that will probably outlast the entire coastline uh, up above the water here, so. Yeah, it's so awesome to think how long they get to stay here and live with us. Uh, the challenge, of course, is that for fish, we can't age them uh, until after they die. So we just need to take records on how long they've been here with us and get to see how that excellent care is really contributing to their long lifespans with us. Um, you know, that also uh, make, wants me to tangent because uh, we were talking about how some of the animals who stay in our kelp forest exhibit are not always found in the Monterey Bay. Yep. Are any of the species in this exhibit migratory? Our guests wanted to know. Yeah, it's a good question. So many of the fish species that you see here might move around a reef, many, uh, you know, a few miles maybe, uh, but most of them kind of, they're migratory when they're larvae, they're out on the ocean currents. Many of these fish have what's known as a pelagic larval duration, meaning that they have little young ones that are just out there in the plankton, so they're kind of moving around wherever the currents take them, but then they kind of settle on a reef and hang out in place. However, we have been tagging giant sea bass and working with partners down in Southern California. We've noticed that those fish do swim up and down the coast between the Channel Islands. Some of them might swim all the way up to Bodega Bay. So some of these fish, the larger ones in particular, are definitely going to be moving around. The anchovies and the schooling fish are going to be following those ocean currents. Um, so a migration like a whale might take a migration to go and breed somewhere 
there. Um, most of these fishes are not going to do that, like a salmon, or uh, which we actually have in the Monterey Bay right now, many salmon that are migratory. Most of these fish are reef-associated fish are going to be hanging out pretty close to where they settle out from when they're young or where they were born alive, just like these perch down here. And actually, these two perch seem to be making some amorous little moves to each other right here. Those perch give birth to live young, and those will hang out pretty close to where they end up being born. Yeah, that's awesome. And we see them here in the kelp forest hang out up in our canopy. So when you come on site, you can look for them up on the second floor for those little babies. Uh, speaking of which, Patrick, I know you're pretty much out of food in there. So maybe before we wrap up, we want to share some more details with our guests, since we know we've got reopening on the horizon. They can come see this in person. Absolutely. Yeah, that's probably the best uh, news or the biggest news that we've had uh, for a while here. So, yeah, we just announced over on social media on our website to our members via email that we will be reopening on July 13th for the general public and on July 9th through the 13th and beyond for all of our members. Biggest difference is you have to reserve your tickets. They're going to be timed tickets, so everybody, members and general audience, has to go and get some timed tickets reserved over on our website. It's all online, but uh, yeah, we're buffing out the windows, cleaning up everything, making sure everything looks slick and span for reopening coming up in just a few short weeks will be a really great time. Yeah, and if you are a member looking to get in on those early opening days for members only, just head to the MontereyBayAquarium.org website slash members to make sure to claim your mem special members access tickets. Exactly. And that is something you can do as since we are so grateful for your support. And if you're a member watching, remember we've also got a special member event online tonight. That's right, yeah, I can actually see here on the other side of the window there, we got some setup, got some lighting, so there'll be a members night coming up and uh yeah if you folks are listening right now and you're thinking hey you know i'd rather come in early with the with the rest of the members uh, you can go ahead and sign up for a membership over on our website as well that membership really does support our mission all of our work with all of these animals here i did want to just thank everybody who is tuning in online for all of your support over these months here uh looking at our videos watching our webcams engaging with us online it's been really really amazing to see that support that you all have for this institution we've been working hard behind the scenes to show you the front of the scenes again so just another huge shout out to everybody out there who's subscribed on twitch who's watching on youtube giving us those views subscribing looking at all that it's really been a really great thing very helpful for us as the aquarium looks to reopen yeah and all the schools and daycares watching at home learning things yep. from us we're so happy you can join us so folks thank you so much for coming if you'd like to check out another on uh, narration like this the next one will be 11 o'clock open sea over on that webcam but patrick thank you so much for taking care of our fish today of course thank you so much Kristen, for feeding me those questions thank you emily on the social media team for looking at all those questions you folks have been sending out there on the cams and feeding them over to Kristen. thanks to anthony i can see him on the other side making sure that our sound is looking good so thank you so much everybody for tuning in hope you have a great rest of your day at the mont at the Monterey bay aquarium online and soon in person